What up? What up? What up, friends? Again, I come to give you both sides of the coin. I am coming to point facts out to you, and you take them for what they are worth from what you hear from me. Now, always fact check. You should always fact check everyone. I ain't telling you to take what I say as gospel. Never should you do that. I am not Jesus. You should not take me as gospel. Uh, but I do a lot of research before I come on here. I make sure I check my facts before I come on here. Um, so again, you're more than welcome uh, to check my facts. Uh, but um, the things I'm going to give to you today are what I see from both sides of the aisle. Last week, we had our presidential debate. Absolute disaster. Absolute disaster. Now, let me be clear. I tuned in for the shit show. I tuned in for the disaster. I thought with the muted mics, Trump was still going to be speaking. But apparently they trained him like Pavlov's dog because he was a good boy. But that's not what I tuned in for. I wanted the debate from last time. Now, granted, I get it. That's not how you can do a proper debate with someone talking over. But it was funny as hell. I can give you that. It was funny. So I turned in for a shit show. And boy, did we get one. Not with Trump necessarily talking over people. And again, let me actually let me back it on up. Let's establish something as a preface. First, I am an independent voter. In the past, I voted Democrat. I did vote for Obama both times. I am now an independent voter. Ever since Hillary v. Trump and the lesser of two evils there, and then Biden v. Trump and the lesser of two evils there, I have been an independent voter since 2016. I hate both sides of the aisle. I think all politicians, all, no matter what party, even if they're independent, are scumbags, are liars, or as Francis Long would say, liars and cheats. Shout out my boy Francis. I probably said that incorrect too, but they're liars and cheats. All of them. All they're out is for the greater good of themselves, their families, and to stuff their pockets. So I don't trust anything a politician says. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way first. I do not like any of them. I don't like Biden and I don't like Trump. They're both evil to me. Now, let's start first with the debate. Whew, hold on. Huh. Hold on a second. Hmm. It's not good. It's not good. We can't. We can't do that. We as a country, as the United States, and I know we're not united right now. We're a lot divided. And it sucks. I wish we were united. Again, I have friends from both sides of the aisle. I don't judge you on who you vote for. Um. Mm, If you're if you're off the if you're off the rails, then I'm gonna judge you. That's when we're getting. Get. But for the majority, I understand. There's a difference between conservative and liberal policies, and we'll get into that in a second and how that affects uh, a voting of a Hispanic man like myself, which we talked about last time. But we'll talk a little bit more about today. Um, we cannot. We cannot continue on with Joe Biden as our president. And I know all the Trump fans are probably screaming and yelling, yay, Omar's on our side. Not so fast. Not so fast. I do not believe Joe Biden is fit to be president anymore. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. There needs to be term limits, first of all. This is ridiculous. You should not be able to be the president over the age of 70. They need to immediately 
institute term limit, uh, a term age limit of 70 years old as the president. Once you get to 70, you're not allowed to be president no more. Sorry, we're getting some new young blood in. I don't care if they're worse. They'll learn on the job. But no, I'm sorry. They've been propping Biden up for a long time to be coherent and physically well and able to do this job. And he has proved in the last few months that he is not. And that's no slight on him as a politician or whatever. Again, I hate all politicians. But he's done good. I mean, most politicians, at least they do some sort of good in their in their career. Even if they're trying to do bad most of the time, they'll somehow end up doing something good. So he's done some good things along the way. And I'm not saying he's not even a, a, a good person, right? I mean, uh, aside from the fact that you could accuse both of them of some tendencies that are not very good, Let's throw that out the window completely. You know, as a president, you know, before obviously he's gone into this decline, he's what I would look for a stoic, a uh, humble, a down to earth, not a, not a dictator, right? Not a, 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 a Hitler or a, a Kim, right? Or a Putin. So, um, as a as a as the person that he projects to the outside world, he is the calm demeanor, everything like that. He is what you would want to show on the world stage. That's no longer the case. <clears throat> That's no longer the case. We can no longer prop him up on the world stage. We can no longer put him out there. Uh, when it's clear he's not mentally fit anymore. So let's get that out of the way first. We need age term limits for presidents. Seven year old is the max. And while we're at it, Term limits for su Supreme Court judges too. There should be no reason Clarence Thomas, Uncle Tom, uh, uh, Clarence Thomas's Uncle Tom ass should still be on the Supreme Court. There's no reason he should still be there. He should have been gone a long time ago. Now he out here accepting yachts and gifts and trips to uh, to 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 affect his opinion. You think that ain't affecting his opinion? Well, you think he's getting that because they being nice to him? Come on, y'all think, think. That's used to influence opinions. That's how politicians get paid. Lobbying to influence their opinion. Supreme Court justices need to have term limits as well. 20 years. No more. That's it. Because then you have these issues where you have judges who, granted, even if you have term limits, are still going to be biased to their political party but at least then after 20 years you know okay you're going to get something different in there it could be the same party but at least it's a different person and again it gets back to the age i don't need we don't need no 80 year old supreme court justices rest in power to rbg rest in power ruth bader, bader ginsburg but shouldn't nobody be dying while they're on the job what are we doing america what are we doing so let's get that out of the way first. Joe Biden is too old to be president anymore. But again, I'm in the middle. I don't like either one. I don't like Trump either. So Trump fans, I'm coming to y'all now. Because damn it, Trump can't be our president either. Biden can't be our president, but damn it, Trump can't either. Because the only thing he did on that stage was completely lie his ass off for it for two hours, which is all he ever does. And I don't want my president to be a liar. I don't want my president to pop off at the mouth. I don't want my president to be angry and tweeting all the time. That's not what I want. I want a stoic, calm president that doesn't have 
his finger on the damn nuclear codes and could at any minute go off. That's not what I want either. So I don't want Biden, right? Because he's just not physically, mentally fit anymore. He can't do it. But I don't want Trump either because he's too crazy. And he could pop off and get us all killed very easily. But he also lies. And he's also not a good person. And what really bothers me the most is when I go to my church meetings or I go to church in general and I'm around the conservative Catholics, I'm around the conservative Christians that claim to be these things but then still tell me that I have to vote for Trump. No, see, that's the confusion. They're voting for Trump because he's a Republican. They're not voting for Trump because he's Trump. Actually, most of the ladies dislike him, and they've told me that. But they've also said, no matter how much you dislike him, Omar, you got to vote for him. Well, no, I don't. I don't. Because as we talked about last episode, conservative policies only support rich and Caucasian folks. I am neither one of those yet. I will be rich one day. I can never be Caucasian, but I will be rich soon enough. And then maybe I will have to vote conservative because I got a lot of money and I need to protect my money. That's neither here nor there right now. I'm not. Right now, I'm not rich. So conservative policies do not support anything I do or anything I would look to do. Let me fix my camera real quick. Get back and focus there, boy. We don't need any of that. What are you doing? Get, it's like uh, it's like David Blaine. Um, so I don't want that in office either. I don't want either choice. It's, again, the lesser of two evils. We got to do better in this country. We've got to have better, oper better choices, better opportunities for ourselves. Now, fine. I've got a lot of people, again, that I know that are Trump supporters. And, again, I'm in the middle. I don't carry the weight. But their thing to me is, and especially the ladies, especially the ladies, right? We don't like him, but he's conservative, so we're voting for him anyways because he supports uh, anti-abortion, right? He supports not having abortion, right? We can get into that all day, and whether you support that or whether you don't or whether you're in the middle like I am, again, like I don't believe you should be able to just go out and kill babies. You I don't believe you should just be, be able to go sleep with whoever you want and then get pregnant and then a month later just go have an abortion because you want to. No. But I also believe that the health of the lady, the incest, rape, those things need to be protected as well. So I see both sides of the coin. I do. But you're not. But they're voting for that person based on his one, um, no, well, not based on the one policy, but mostly based on that policy and then his other policies, which are concerned. But they've told me before they don't like him as a person and they wouldn't have voted for him had he been, you know, not been conservative. Which, by the way, hilarious. I read an interview um, uh, from Trump, and this was back in like 1987. So I get it. It's a long time ago. But he even quoted back then that if he ever ran for president, he would run as a conservative because it would be easier for him to win. He doesn't believe in the conservative issues. Do you think that he really cares about abortion? No, he doesn't. He could care less about any baby being killed. Actually, the only thing Trump cares about is himself and money. He doesn't even care about his own family. Which is why to me, when the, when the Christian conservatives support Trump, I look at him like, well, how are you going to support him when he is the anti, he is the anti, let me not get upset, he is the anti-ethical, he is the antithesis to what Jesus was all about. Jesus was all about loving your neighbor, helping each other, being nice to people, and Trump is none of those things, yet they still blindly support him, which is very upsetting, because you can't be a Christian and say you love Christ and say that uh, that Trump is anything like that because he's 100% the opposite of what Jesus was. 100% the opposite. But again, let's throw all of that out. Throw all of it out. Doesn't matter the character of the people. Doesn't matter if they're old. Doesn't matter. Let's throw all of them out. We still cannot have either one of these two as candidates. 
There's just no way we can go on. And yeah, you can talk, oh, but Joe Biden and the Hunter Biden laptop and blah, blah. And I agree. Hunter Biden should have been convicted and he was. So was Trump. And if you want to try to say that Hunter Biden's dealings in Burisma and Ukraine and all these other things are what makes the Biden family corrupt, then you got to go the other way. You got to read deeper into it because there's a lot of reports out there. And intelligence, I'm not talking news reports, okay? I was in the community. I get. I still know all of the information that most public are never going to know. You act like the Trump kids didn't have ties to Russia and China getting paid by them because they definitely are. And still, so don't get it twisted. All of them, which is why I said I hate all of the politicians, the Bidens, the Trumps, all of them. They are all the same, all the same. They just want money to make themselves richer and more important and don't care about you or me. So then you ask, you ask me, well, how's that going to change anything, Omar, then? If we get new candidates, how's that going to make anything better? You could be right. You could be completely right. I don't know. But I know we can't have these two. I know we got to have some better choices than these two. Because that ain't going to work. That ain't going to cut it. I don't want somebody who's not mentally or physically able like Biden. And I don't want a liar and a cheat and a scumbag like Trump. I don't want either to be my president. Now, some would argue we need Trump right now. Look at the world, Russia, China, North Korea, all invading on territories and looking to invade on the United States. You will hear no disagreement from me on that. I agree because, again, I was in the community. I have very close ties to all of those areas. And so I know those areas very, very well. And you're right. They are trying to evolve their world domination by encroaching on territories around them and then to move in on us. Sure. Yes. There are cyber, electronic, and other types of warfare that we have to worry about that you may have never even heard of. And so you may say, and I've heard this from some Trump supporters, we need Trump. We don't need Biden. Trump is a strong man. He can go out there and handle the rest of the 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 you know the the world and make sure that they are they stay in their place. Okay, I can hear that. I can hear that, and I give credence to your argument. And I would even, and I've thought about this the past couple of days. I even thought about that's a very good point. But then I look at the other side of it. And I know that Trump's form is in the form of other dictators that have come before him, most notably Hitler. And the things that he's said lately about deportation, about camps, uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to be thrown in a camp. Granted, I'm a citizen and a veteran, but there's people that may have been just, just become citizens or just naturalized or coming over to join the military from a foreign country. Uh, those people deserve to be. So again, we don't know exactly what he's going to do, but he usually goes by what uh, he usually, his policies usually trend in the direction of strong arming people, of forcing people to do things. And again, that may be good on the world stage and what we need right now. So I give credence to that argument, but I would also venture to say, and I would give you the other side of that argument. What if he pops off and pops off the nuclear codes for no reason? What if he presses that red button? It's not really a red button, by the way, everybody. I'm not going to tell you what it is because that's not your, that's not your, you have no need to know, let's just say. Uh, uh, but uh, there's more involved than just a red button that he can get to. Um, but still, I don't want that person to have my nuclear codes as well. I want neither of them to have it. So my whole point here, y'all, as we get more and more into the election season is the debate showed us that Biden is not fit to be president anymore. That's key. But it also showed us that Trump cannot be either. If I have to fact check 90 minutes of your speech, I don't want that as my president. I'm sorry. I just don't. 
If I have to fear that you may pop off at Putin or Kim and they may throw a nuclear bomb at us, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. But I also don't want Joe because he might not be able to stay awake to make sure that he stops the nuclear bomb from coming. Got to call a spade a spade. I'm not going to let a dictator, strong man, Hitler, who lies and cheats and steals and, you know, uh, whether you want to call January 6th, whatever you want to call it, you call it whatever you want. I call it, a, I call it an insurrection. I have a friend, our friend, we have a friend that was there that day working as a police officer. And he has told us everything. And I saw it live with my own eyes. We are from D.C., so we know all about it. And it was bad. No spin to put on it at all. And you can say, oh, he didn't necessarily tell them to go and attack. He said, fight for your country. He said, peacefully protest, but you've got to fight for your country. Okay, well, what do you think people are going to do? Riled up, angry people. I'm not, I'm not putting any suppositions on the people involved. It doesn't matter. When you get into that group state of mind, when you get into the group think, things happen. I've been part of it before where I've made stupid decisions because I've been part of a group that made a larger stupid decision and I went along with it. It happens. I understand. I get it. A lot of those people are probably very nice and innocent people that got caught up in the wrong sort of thing. But there's a lot of people that weren't. And come on now. You can't say that they were. And you can't say that it was nothing. It actually surprised the hell out of me. I'll tell you a little story. I was at a, I was at the Veterans Entrepreneurship Program with a bunch of other veterans, um, and I was having a chat with somebody at the school at the university, and come to find out that they had never even heard about January 6th. Obviously, they're conservative Republican. They don't watch the liberal news networks or things like that. So, and Fox News wasn't going to tell you about it. But I was just like, damn, really? You ain't hear about it at all? Like you ain't even just stumble on it on the internet? And you're a 50-year-old man, veteran? Okay, all right. It just bamboozled the hell out of me. Uh, but that was, an in, that was an insurrection. Whether he spurred it on or not, which is debatable and on you to decide, not me, what it was and what ended up being and what I know from what I saw and what I know from personal police witnesses that worked there as police, that was an insurrection. What do we do? What do we do? It's too late to get rid of Joe if they're if Biden, if you're the Democrats. I mean, you could have a shadow Obama president see through Michelle Obama, I guess, which by the way, hilarious survey came out today. 33% Democrat, 33% independent, 33% Republican. So split across the board for this survey. It was done by Reuters, and they found that Michelle Obama was the leading candidate that could beat Trump and the only one that could beat Trump from the, which is crazy to me because she has no um, political experience, but obviously that shows you that they would be voting for her to have a shadow Obama campaign, which honestly, I'd much rather have than a shadow Obama campaign than Biden or Trump, either one. At least he, at least he's young and has a, has a good mind. The other two don't. Right. Yeah. His policies may not be for the conservatives. But again, we talked about this. I'm not rich or white. So the liberal policies until I become rich are still more on my on my side. Sorry, I got to vote for what's going to give me the best life, not you. Um, and also, you got to look at a possible civil war that might come. And this could come either way. This could come whoever gets elected, which is what I fear most, because I think that we need to be united at this time instead of divided. But there's so many people especially on the internet that just want to bring division and, 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 and just want to fight each other. And it's just like, come on, like we are in this together. If there's a nuclear attack, we're in this together. If there's a zombie apocalypse, we are in this together. You think I'm going to care who the fuck put it for if there's a zombie apocalypse? No, I want you to grab that rifle and run with me and shoot some. When, when military members, when veterans, when they go to war and they're in the foxhole, cause I never got to go. I volunteered to go to Iraq, but they wouldn't let me go. I wanted to, they wouldn't let me. So don't, uh, I don't want anybody to think I didn't want to go. I wanted to go. I volunteered. They wouldn't let me, but I have friends that went. You think in the foxhole, they care who the hell the person next to him voted for? No, they want you to keep your eye on the enemy. Let's be united. 
Let's not let these stupid scumbag politicians divide us because they don't care about you and they don't care about me. And I've said that before. The government don't care about you. You think the government care about you? They don't. I worked for the government for 10 years. They don't care about you. They don't care about me. If they did, maybe they take better care of the veterans. Ah, it's neither here nor there. That's just a that's a side side thought that crossed my mind. <laughs> but it's not good because then you go to the Supreme Court ruling where they're saying that presidents have immunity within their official duties. Well, then you start to urge and lurk into territory that you may not want to get into. Because then can Trump call up Georgia and demand for 12,000 votes? Can Trump then tell people to go fight for their country and cause an insurrection? Not that he did. Not saying that. Again, that's up to you to decide. I don't, I don't have a decision either way. But the reason I bring that up is because the Supreme Court now giving immunity, which, by the way, the Supreme Court leans conservatives. Again, back to term limits, right? We wouldn't have these issues so much if we, and we still have them, but not as much, if we had term limits. How And this goes for any president, not just Trump, but Biden too. How much power does that give that person? I don't care about the Stormy Daniels case. That was a witch hunt. I don't care about that. That's true. I don't care if he slept with some porn star. I don't care. It matters none to me. I would expect him to have done that plenty of times, actually, with how rich he is. But I do care when you're going out trying to affect the electoral process. I do care if you're trying to affect Congress and what they're trying to get done in non-official capacities. It's a very thin line there that now we have to subjugate, right? Now we have to figure out because of the fact that they have now given official immunity to presidents. So now it's not just Trump, but it's anyone that comes along that might be crazy. Just things we got to take into consideration, y'all. Things we got to think about. I I personally, there's not really much uh, in the way that the Democrats can do at this point to replace uh, Biden with another candidate. It's just too late in the game. Uh, I honestly think Trump's going to win this one. I have said that. Uh, I said that back when he won in 2016. And I said Biden was going to win in 2020. So I've called these correctly. Well, I shit, I called the two Obama ones too. So I've called the past five presidential races correctly. I think Trump is going to win this. Uh, but again, I don't want either one. It's the lesser of two evils. They're both really evil. They both don't deserve to be a president or even hold any official position. Hey, they ain't getting no younger. <laughs> All of